For this module, we're going to talk about ideal systems for electrification in the HVAC realm for our commercial and multifamily buildings. Let's jump into some of the biggest immediate opportunities available, which also happen to align with the current permitting process code changes. All the recommended systems you see on your screen and we're going to talk about here have high efficiency heat pump replacement options available today in the market. Based on the current electric and natural gas rates, a partial electrification or again switching to a dual fuel or hybrid system for any of these um, will typically result in operating cost savings for the building owners between 10 to 15 percent, of course, depending on the operating conditions and the installed systems efficiency. In some cases, the equipment replacement may not be in the exact same configuration and might require some small modifications to physical installations, the electrical supply, piping, etc. There are some examples of here that we're talking about that again, during the permit process with furnaces with air conditioners, unitary air conditioners, rooftop units, tank and tankless gas water heaters, um, each of these would trigger that permitting requirement process to complete one or two of those optional new requirements if it was decided to switch to a, another gas unit and not at least a partially electrified solution. Um, now note, if a building owner is already planning on switching to a heat pump, we don't need to worry about these permitting code changes. We want more home owners and building owners um, switching to heat pump technology at the minimum with partial electrification and that is being rewarded by not requiring the same degree of permit process changes. Let's take our first example. Um, this is going to be what we would consider AC replacement with a heat pump option. So let's take what you see on the screen here. It's a residential style gas furnace, which we do see in both um, small commercial and multifamily buildings. It has an air conditioning coil attached and a compressor on the outside. If that AC unit is either not working very well or maybe it's nearing the end of its life and the building owner is considering replacing just the AC unit, one option is to replace it with a heat pump instead. You may or may not already be aware that heat pump technology is very similar to air conditioning technology with one exception. It can work in both directions and it does not take a lot of additional cost to move an air conditioner to become a heat pump. So in doing this, we replace that AC coil and outdoor compressor with a heat pump model. If we use a variable speed or what's sometimes referred to as a variable capacity heat pumps, we can actually displace some of the need for the furnace or the rooftop unit to provide heating all the way down to below freezing temperatures, again, with only a minor cost upgrade. So this is considered to be one of the best and simplest ways to move directly to a heat pump future. That's taking an existing air conditioner that's being considered for replacement and instead of replacing it with another air conditioner, replace it with a very similar heat pump size and model. Our second example works in the same principle as the first, but now we're talking about typically a unitary AC that is not connected directly to a furnace or not integrated into a rooftop unit. So it could be the example that you see here in a multifamily or small business um, where there are one or multiple what are referred to as window shaker or individual air conditioning units um, typically that go through a window or potentially through a wall or it could be a rooftop AC or rooftop um, what is considered a swamp cooler. So in this consideration, we're talking about taking that AC unit and replacing it with a heat pump. Um, again, this could be, if it's a rooftop um, swamp cooler, we may be replacing it with a, a dual fuel RTU. Um, we might be installing a ductless heat pump or a packaged terminal heat pump. Again, as I just mentioned earlier, sometimes there are minor variations, so it's not exactly the same as the previous, but it's doing the same job. Again, in this case, a variable speed or variable capacity heat pump can displace the heating system. In this scenario, it's usually a separate space heater. It might be a boiler 
Um, it could be a hanging um, heater or a radiant system. In this case, by just switching out the swamp cooler or air conditioner to a heat pump and making some slight adjustments to thermostats, when it is time for heating, um, especially during our shoulder months, so our spring and our fall or our early winter, uh, where it's not quite freezing outside, that heat pump can do the majority of the space heating work while allowing that space heater, boiler, or radiant system to stay in place and still come on and do its job during the coldest months of the year. So this is a very similar process to the first one. It's in this case, we're just replacing um, a unitary or disconnected air conditioner with a heat pump model to displace the need for using the existing heating system quite as much. Our next example is dealing with rooftop units or RTUs. These are found in all types and sizes of buildings and are quite common in the commercial building sector in Denver. Typically, of course, these are located on the building's roof or sometimes even at ground level or mounted on the side of the building, but most commonly on the rooftop. Um, they may have constant volume or variable volume fans to distribute air throughout the building as well for ventilation. In these types of scenarios, a dual fuel or cold climate heat pump only RTU could be installed. And there are numerous versions of both available in the market. We do encourage you to work with your distributors and your manufacturers reps to understand what is available through the channels that you normally operate so that it makes it much simpler to consider not just replacing a gas unit with another gas unit, but moving to at minimum one of those partially electrified or otherwise known as dual fuel or hybrid systems for a rooftop unit. Working directly with your distributor and manufacturer rep will help you better understand the pricing, any additional steps that need to be taken in terms of installation and commissioning, and finally, understand the availability of these pieces of equipment. Is this something that is regularly stocked or may there be a one to three week waiting period to get it? This will allow you to have better communication with the building owners and help them understand all the components of the decision-making process. Here we're following up on that and showing the electrified or electrification recommendation for a rooftop unit. So it includes a heat pump in lieu of a cooling only system and it's, you know, can have similar first costs. Yeah, the backup or peak heating can be natural gas backup. Um, there are a number of dual fuel rooftop units available on the market. Um, and this minimizes our electrical supply changes and can reduce our peak operating costs during the coldest months by allowing the natural gas to work. There are also some systems that use electric resistance as their backup heat. These may have a lower first cost um, in terms of replacement compared to a um, cold climate heat pump model. Um, and these are more applicable if natural gas is not present um, at the location. Uh, the operating costs are not quite as good. So one consideration there may be to look at a cold climate uh, rooftop unit um, that does all of its work with heat pumps. They do exist. They're a little bit more difficult to find, but they do exist and they are available in the marketplace. Round two opportunities. Um, these are things that may be under consideration today, and there are some available, both dual fuel or hybrid solutions available, as well as some straight heat pump cold climate solutions available but we recognize that they're a little bit more challenging to actually design, um, size, and install correctly. So we, this is not our first push right now. We consider this round two, and this, these will primarily fall under the 2025 permit process changes, but that doesn't mean they can't be considered today. So if you have a building owner who is looking at some of these pieces of equipment and is asking about replacement, you can be looking into this and you can definitely connect with the program and we will work with you to see if we've got replacement options available um, and help you figure out how to design and size these correctly. Again, that being said, we consider this a round two opportunity. It is something that will begin to be factoring in in 2025, 
But if you see something like this today and a building owner is showing interest in these types of upgrades, please feel free to reach out to the program. And again, stay in close contact with your distributors and manufacturers reps to find out what types of products in a partially electrified or fully electrified system are available. Just a bit further down the road than those round two opportunities, um, we're kind of thinking of these as our eventual electrification opportunities. Um, with these pieces of equipment, what is truly available on the market, it's a little bit more challenging to find, a few less options, and there's a lot of work being done um, research and development wise right now to improve the heat pump opportunities and swap outs for things like central heating plants, central boilers. Um, there are some other programs that already exist, by the way, for steam heat exchangers, but we recognize that, you know, there can be large electrical peak and high operating costs if we switched gas versions of these out today for their electric counterparts. So these are considered eventual because we know the market will be adopting ideal solutions for these over the next four years, um, and these will be ready by 2027 to do what the more static um, air conditioner, condenser, gas furnace replacements are able to do now, which is to swap out a very similar product that is at least partially electrified. So we're excited to see that these are coming down the road. And again, if you have a building right now where the building owner is really considering a central boiler or central heating plant, um, and this is something where they want to consider something other than a like for like gas replacement, definitely reach out to the program. We will work with you to see if there is a replacement option that makes sense and something that could fit under our electrification program. But again, these requirements won't be kicking in for a few years. So we wanted just to be let you know, we are aware of the fact that these do make up a good percentage of the systems that we see out there. They are part of our program and they are part of our plan, um, but they are considered eventual electrification opportunities currently. So if you see these types of buildings, call us, reach out to us. We'll be glad to help you consider what might be an option and what's available today. If you are truly interested in learning much more about how all of the systems and buildings could be electrified and maybe what is coming next down the pipeline, um, we can't recommend more downloading the cost-effective strategies for electrification. Um, this was developed for the city of Denver and for the Energize Denver team. You can either again use your smartphone or tablet and scan the QR code here, or there's also a link available, or you can put this in your search engine and type in cost-effective strategies for electrification, city and county of Denver, and this report should show up. It is quite detailed. There's a lot of terrific information in here. And for those of you who are really embracing this and saying this is going to become a core part of my business model to help building owners understand how to partially or fully electrify their buildings, we highly recommend downloading this report. It's a great place to start. As you begin to look at the space heating and cooling um, current opportunities, opportunities that are coming soon and opportunities that are coming down the road, there may be quite a bit to learn. Um, these are some of the products and resources available that can really help you identify if the products you're looking at and the products you're recommending to building owners are feasible, whether or not they make sense and whether or not, most importantly, they will do the job. So first on the left, we have the Energy Star winter design temperatures. So again, you can click on the link or scan the QR code. Um, it's a long PDF form, so you can search by state and county, and it will give you what is considered the winter design temperature, or the point, the outdoor temperature at which 99% of the time, the city and county of Denver is at that temperature or warmer. That temperature, that winter design temperature is used for sizing um, heat pump options, whether they're all electric cold climate heat pumps or whether we're talking again about partially electrified dual fuel or hybrid systems. Next, if we look in the upper right, this is the NEEP or Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnerships Group. 
their residential style, cold climate air source heat pump product list, um, which is really terrific. It's easy to sort through um, and it has literally over hundreds of thousands of different cold climate rated models available. Um, and it will actually show you how they're likely to perform at a variety of outdoor temperatures. So again, scan this, you can learn a lot more and you can actually see if you have a residential style furnace with an air conditioner, um, what the potential performance is going to be like for a cold climate heat pump equivalent. And then finally, in the lower right, the high efficiency RTU replacement toolkit is also available. You can scan this QR code again, and what you're gonna get is a, a website will pop up with, I believe it's five or six different resources. Not all of them are truly applicable to contractors. Some of them are more designed for energy efficiency programs or utilities or local governments, but there are a couple of resources on there that can really help you again, think through the process of how do I take a gas fired RTU and either switch this to a partially electrified dual fuel system or an all electric cold climate rooftop unit heat pump. So very worth thinking about. All of these are highly valuable resources and we highly encourage you to bookmark them um, either on your phone or your computer or your tablet. So these resources are available to you when you're communicating with a building owner and begin to have these discussions.